What's good, YouTube? It's me, your boy Squid, back in another video. Today, I want to talk to you guys about how to beat Salomon Grade because of the fact that they actually got some new cards in the recent side set, which focuses a lot on fire monsters. And this deck actually got first place at the regional that happened in Richmond, Virginia over the course of this weekend with over 300 people. So I'm thinking that this was an older fan favorite deck. It's seen some hits on the ban list, but now that it's kind of coming back, the only thing that's still on the ban list is Gazelle at one. And with the additional new support, I think a lot of players will actually start picking up this deck again. So let's quickly Quickly talk about how this deck functions. This is like a control deck, a lot like, uh, you know, the mid-range decks that we had traditionally, things like Pure Zodiac. So before we actually talk about how to beat the deck, let's talk a little bit about the deck and what it does. This deck has a lot of support. It's like Black Wings, Konami just printed them endless support cards and we happen to get new ones. So this deck typically is a Cybers mid-range based control deck that relies on playing a lot of hand traps and then using their monsters to link climb into a toolbox of link monsters, typically in the Cybers type because all of these monsters happen to be Cybers. So they actually take advantage of the traditional Cybers engine, things like Transkill Talker, Splash Mage into potentially Update Jammer and of course access code for the OTKs. So having a good knowledge of what these cards do typically is a good idea. It's a lot like math mech. Now for the actual monsters themselves, how this deck works is they use something called reincarnate linking, which means that some of their monsters can actually link into the same copy of themselves while you have the Salomon Great Sanctuary on the field. And when they do that, they typically gain an additional effect that makes them stronger than their last version of themselves. They have a link one called Salomon Great Bail Links, which allows them to actually add the Salomon Great Sanctuary when he's link summoned. All he takes is a one level four or lower Cybers monster. So that's their main go-to. And then they can instantly add Salomon Great Sanctuary so their reincarnate links are alive. Salomon Great Bail Links can banish itself to protect a Salomon Great card that would be destroyed by battle or card effect. So they typically always have this in the graveyard. So just be careful when you have things like board wipes or like even going in a battle when you're trying to swing over things, they can just banish one of their Salomon Great Bailinxes, and then protect it from being destroyed. They also have a very powerful link too called Salomon Great Sunlight Wolf, which allows them to add back a fire monster from their graveyard to their hand, non-targeting whenever a monster is summoned to a zone that this monster points to. So when you're playing against Salomon Greats, you typically don't want to summon into the zone that Salomon Great Sunlight Wolf is pointing to because he happens to point up and down. So definitely don't do that because they're going to be able to trigger the effect if you summon to its zone, and then they are going to be able to add back a copy you have a fire monster from the grave of the hand and they can also add things that are not salomon greats like ash blossom which is a fire monster so it's kind of neat that they can loop the effects they also have a second effect for Sunlight Wolf where if he's reincarnate Link, so Link using himself while Salomon Great Sanctuary is on the field, you can actually add back a Salomon Great Spiral Trap from your graveyard to your hand. Neither of these effects target and they can use both of them once per turn. So typically they'd be able to use the effect of Sunlight Wolf to add back a Spiral Trap and also a monster on their turn, meaning they're getting intrinsic pluses from this deck. It's a lot like a control deck that just adds a bunch of advantage, but also has mid-range capabilities. They also have two traps that are very, very notable. The first one is a Solemn Judgment, effectively. It's Salomon Great Roar, which can be activated while they control Salomon Great Link Monster, and also Salomon Great Rage, which is basically an Icarus attack that can send one Salomon Great Monster from their hand or field to destroy one card on the field, or target a Salomon Great Monster they control that was Link Summoned, and then destroy cards up to the Link rating of that monster. Uh, that monster obviously has to be Reincarnate Linked in order for this to be live, but it's really, really interesting, and they actually recently got a brand new link four in their archetype so it means they can actually pop up to four cards now on their starting combo with salomon great raging phoenix which is now their number one starter play they can actually get into this card and also search salomon great rage off of one card which is nuts now, they also have a bunch of extenders. So we're talking about like the extenders. These guys typically summon themselves back from Grave. So we have Salomon Great Spinny, Salomon Great Jack Jaguar, Salomon Great Foxy, and also Salomon Great Falco, which I don't know if all the decks still play. But these cards actually can bring themselves back from the graveyard generally when you control a Salomon Great monster or a Link monster. So just be wary of this. If you have any way to stop them from having a Salomon Great on board, then you can effectively stop the extenders from coming back in the graveyard. The one thing about Salomon Great Foxy is that instead of having a Salomon Great, they can actually bring it back if a face-up Sparrow Trap is on the field. Meaning if you're playing a deck like a Floodgate deck that establishes things like Skill Drain, it can be very, very annoying that Foxy can come back and also pop your floodgate so just be wary of that they also got some new cards here salomon great of fire which is a stratos monster in the new set this monster allows them to add a level four lower salomon great monster aka gazelle typically and then start link climbing and going off into their plays the fact that it's salomon great is also very very relevant for the deck 
And then last but not least, let's talk about a couple of the extenders they also have. So they also play Will of the Salomon Great, which is effectively a monster reborn. They're able to special summon a Salomon Great monster from the hand or graveyard during the main phase, or they can actually summon out multiple Salomon Great monsters by targeting a Salomon Great Link monster they control that was reincarnate linked, and then special summon Salomon Great monster from their graveyard equal to that Link rating. So it's really, really niche interaction there. And they have an add card that's a Rota for Salomon Greats. It's a quick play spell, so they're often activating this in draw phase to play around Drone Lockbird. Just something to note there. All right, now let's talk about how to beat this deck. Starting with the hand traps, Ash Blossom enjoys Spring. You should generally Ash anything that allows them to snowball advantage. So anything that allows them to accumulate two or more cards off of one card, that's definitely what we want to Ash. We do not want them to snowball. One of the prime offenders, in my opinion, is actually the new card, Salomon Great of Fire. I think this is actually a valid card to Ash because it prevents them from getting to Salomon Great Gazelle, which is currently at one. And it prevents them from snowballing massive advantage into their extenders because Gazelle can then foolish one of their extenders like Spinny and then they can go off. Another card that you can consider ashing if they didn't open with Salomon Great of Fire is actually Mirage Stalio. This is a card, the XYZ, that uses two level three monsters. They detach one to special summon a Salomon Great monster from their deck in defense mode. So they could go to some of their extenders like Jack Jaguar, which gives them a body on field and then also comes back from the graveyard. So it's basically two for one uh, cards, right? So we definitely would want to ash there. So the argument for actually ashing the Salomon Great of Fire, in my opinion, is if they do not activate Circle in the draw phase, which 9.9 .9 times out of 10 they're probably going to do to play around Drone Lockford, then that means they probably don't have it. So they don't go Salomon Great Circle in the draw step to add something like a Gazelle, then it probably means that this is probably one of their main starters, so they have to have it resolve in order to see access to Gazelle, because Gazelle's at 1, so they typically have to either hard draw it or use Effective Circle to add it to the hand among the extenders that they have. So I actually think that Ashing here could potentially hurt them quite well. Moving on, let's talk about Nibiru. So this card is obviously very effective against the deck. A lot of times people make memes in the past where their end board for Salomon Great is a Nib token. However, with new support, we have to be very, very cognizant of the fact that they can add a lot of cards off of one card with the existence of Salomon Great Raging Phoenix. So if we wait too long to Nib, then they could go into Salomon Great Raging Phoenix off of their standard one card card combo with the Salomon Great of Fire, and then they have access to their traps. So things like Salomon Great Rage or Salomon Great Roar, because Raging Phoenix adds any Salomon Great on summon from their deck to their hand. So there may be a moment before they go into the Raging Phoenix where we can actually consider nibbing, in addition to consider nibbing actually when Salomon Great Sunlight Wolf is in play, so they're not able to add back a fire monster to their hand. So just like recognizing when exactly to nib, it depends on what combo line they're going to. But if they're doing five summons before they're able to trigger the effect of Raging Phoenix, I could actually see us making an argument to nib there so they're not able to get access to their traps. Because even if we nib them and they have access to the trap, they're still gonna be able to use their other extenders, maybe something like a Salomon Great Will, to bring back another Salomon Great and they're still gonna have their traps live. So just be wary there. If they are making five summons before the Sunlight Wolf is able to trigger, that's another part, potential moment that we can actually nib Nibiru them there. Generally, it doesn't really matter though if they're adding back just a simple Salomon Great monster from the grave to the hand. In today's Yu-Gi-Oh, we don't really care about that. It's more devastating if they added something back like an Ash Blossom, right? Which we actually want to stop. So you have to kind of juggle between the options and see where to nib at the sweet spot. Another thing is if they're actually trying to go into Deco Talker Heat Soul, we generally want to nib before this hits the board because they're going to be able to draw a card for free, whereas our nib just loses value that way, right? So recognizing when is a choke point. When do they have a bunch of monsters on the field and they're trying to link off into either a Link 3 Heat Soul or a Link 4 Raging Phoenix or in the obscure moments where they're trying to add back a potential card that has value from the grave with Sunlight Wolf. So preventing them from doing that before Sunlight Wolf can trigger obviously is really important. By the time that this card does trigger, if we nib there, it's too late to stop the effect. Droll Lockbird is actually hideous against this deck. I'm sorry guys, but this card just does not do that much. They can play in the draw phase using Circle to bypass the Droll Lockbird. And then later on when they're adding to the hand, it probably doesn't really matter anymore. Again, this is a mid-range deck, so we don't really want to try taking away from their strategy because that's exactly what their game plan is against us. So instead of that, I would rather play cards that are more high impact that actually deal with preventing them from snowballing advantage, whereas Droll Lockbird is just a free nag one. If we're playing Shifter in a deck like Kashira, then it's definitely solid against this deck because it does rely entirely on the graveyard. There's not much to be said about this. You should again be Shiftering in draw or standby phase to play around the existence of Triple Tactics talent. So make sure that you guys are shotgunning this. However bad that may seem, it's currently the correct play in my opinion. 
Effect Veiler, Mourner, and Imperm. These cards are not actually terrible against this deck because a lot of their lines actually rely heavily on the Link Monsters or certain monsters resolving in order for them to further their plays. So again, using it on something like a Salomon Great of Fire on the normal summon, I would definitely see that as respectable, preventing them from starting their combo lines. What you don't want to waste your Veiler on is something like a Bailinx, in my opinion, to add the Salomon Great spell card, field spell card, because this just doesn't really do anything. Like their field spell allows them to amass some advantage, but it doesn't really stop them from playing. We're effectively trading an effect Veiler for the Salomon Great Sanctuary, which a Salomon Great player would probably take any day of the week, right? We want to trade it against things that actually matter. So against potentially Sunlight Wolf, if they're trying to add back something like an Ash Blossom in the mid game where we actually can't afford to lose to Ash Blossom, I generally wouldn't recommend uh, uh, Veiling this unless they actually reincarnate Linked it so they can have the ability to add back a Sparrow Trap as well as a monster. And then that way we're dealing with two for one, right? We're preventing them from potentially adding back a Roar and we're preventing them from potentially adding back a monster. So just be cognizant if they're trying to get two for one value out of one card, definitely want to uh, use our Imperm or Veilers there. Other things are Mirage Stalio. Again, we can Imperm or Veiler there. You could make an argument potentially to Imperm or Veiler a Gazelle, but generally I would rather wait just because this deck plays so many extenders and like their extra extender isn't going to make or break it. We can rather wait until it actually matters for us to Veiler or Imperm. You could consider Veiler and Imperming a Splash Mage if you recognize that their hand is kind of bad and they're going instantly into a Splash Mage instead of their Salomon Great plays because they want to go into a Heat so and then pass with a bunch of hand traps in their hand. So just things to be wary of is like gauging how good their hand is as well, what kind of plays they're going into. Mid to late game, we can also stop the Splash Mage or potentially the Transcode Talker if it's not co-link to prevent them from getting the access code. If they do get the access code, you could also Veiler that, but remember, Update Jammer will allow it to attack twice, so that's still 4,600 to the dome, so make sure you guys account for that. If you're siding Ghost Spell and Haunted Mansion and you don't have anything to take out, you could actually potentially put this in. It's not the worst card, but it's not great either. Recognize that this card is only one for one that trades with your extenders in the grave, and it also doesn't banish them. So even though these extenders like Spinier are once per turn, they still rest in the graveyard. So on the following turn, they're still going to be able to use it. So just be wary of that. But if you don't have any other cards to side in, this is definitely an option to consider. Okay, moving on. Full disclosure, I actually don't know how good this card is, but it's Contact C. This is a card that no one's really respecting anymore, and I realized by looking at the Salomon Great Extra deck, they only play one generic Link Monster, which is Transcode Talker. So if they let off with something like Salomon Great of Fire, and we chain the effect of Contact C, they would be forced to search an extender like Salomon Great Spinny, bring that out to the table for free, and then link off Contact C and the other two monsters to go into a Transcode Talker, which could then bring back one of their monsters, and then from there probably go into something like a Splash Mage into a Heat Soul. So their play could be suboptimal there. I'm not sure how much it would actually affect them because it does seem kind of awful where we're going Nag 1. But this card does have crossover against Purelys as well. So it's potentially a card we can consider playing. I don't think it's the best card now that I've kind of went over in my head. But this is something that we can definitely consider down the pipeline as well. Because Purelys, I, I'm pretty sure they only play Sky Striker Azalea as they're only out. So this could actually have some crossover. And then last but not least, let's talk about some spell trap removal. So Harpy's Feather Duster and Cosmic Cyclone are actually decent against this deck. Now you guys are think it's a little crazy. They already have the Solomon Judgment, which is going to negate that, but they're not going to have access to this card every time. And having the Cosmic to snipe this card is already good enough where we're trading a one for one with their Solemn Judgment negation. Also, this is a type of deck to side in heavy floodgates like anti-spell fragrance in game two, game three to lock us out of our spell cards. So having the Cosmic is very important so we can continue playing. Ideally, we could snipe the Fragrance, or if we have multiple Cosmic Cyclones, actually play through the Fragrance plus the Solomon Great Roar. Just little things to note of. We can't just not play cards because the existence of a Solemn Judgment exists. We have to play the cards to the best of our ability and the best of what they do. And if you're playing Floodgates, things like There Can Be Only One are actually highly effective against this deck because this deck is fully Cybers. If you haven't noticed, even the extra deck is completely Cybers. It's very hard for them without this card, but they do have one in Engine Out, which we talked about earlier, Salomon Great Foxy. So if they do have Foxy in the graveyard, consider leaving your opponent's monsters on the table and putting your monsters in defense mode so they cannot bring out the Foxy to pop the There Can Be Only One. And that's about all I had for the video. If you guys have any other tips or tricks on how to beat Salomon Great, especially now that they got their new cards, which no one really, really knows what they do yet, let me know in the comments below. Other than that, we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.